for the love of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, other than loud salawat, ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ahsan, ta'awudhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahi rahmani rahim, salamun alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Firstly, my uh, congratulations to all of you and uh, to the Imam of our time, Imam Zaman, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. On this uh, amazing and uh, uh, beautiful occasion of the third of Sha'ban, when our third Imam Hussein alayhi salam came on this earth. And, uh, for, and also, I uh, want to thank the Haydari Jamaat, the management committee, for inviting me. It's an honor to be present with you all, with your permission, inshallah, for the three nights. And uh, inshallah, we can celebrate in the, and do justice to the celebrations of these infallibles that have blessed uh, our earth, inshallah. So the first part before the majlis, um, the way I, I, inshallah, I will split it uh, with uh, like a char misre in, in fadail of uh, the imam. And then we'll have a dua. Um, uh, where we can all inshallah recite together and then after I'll explain the next bit after the majlis inshallah but do inshallah recite together whenever we can um, there's English um, translations as well that we've uh, alhamdulillah like uh, kindly the Haydari Jamaat have uh, arranged so if you don't understand Urdu please uh, watch the screens as well so we can get a better understanding of the kalam salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे करम हुसैन का है मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे करम हुसैन का है अता किया हुआ सारा भरम हुसैन का है मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे करम हुसैन का है The translation is ready or is that delayed? Inshallah is coming. Okay, good, good, good. मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे करम हुसैन का है और यजीदियत को मिले सर नगु जमाना हुआ यजीदियत को मिले सर नगु जमाना हुआ बुलंद आज भी लेकिन अलम हुसैन का है नारा हैदरी हैदरी मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे करम हुसैन का है और मैं मौत बे हूँ जहाँ में हुसैन के सदके मैं मौत बे हूँ जहाँ में हुसैन के सदके कसम खुदा की मेरे दम में दम हुसैन का है मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे करम हुसैन का है अता किया हुआ सारा भरम हुसैन का है मैं खुश नसीब हूँ मुझ पे वर मोहम्मद वाली मोहम्मद सलावत So this next uh, dua, essentially, we're going to recite. One of the it's, it's uh, one of my favorite duas to recite. It's uh, essentially begging and pleading to Imam Hussein alayhi salam to call us back. You know, a lot of us uh, don't get an opportunity um, to go too often, and we pray for those who haven't gone to go to those holy lands of Iraq um, to visit the kings of Karbala and the king of Najaf, inshallah. And those who have been, we pray that we are allowed to go again and again and again, inshallah, till the day we die, inshallah. So. 
uh, and there's an English verse in this one as well. So, but when I, I do want you to try recite with me as well, but raise your hands whilst we recite this, inshallah. Ke ek baar aur bula lo mola, apna zawar bana lo mola. All together, inshallah. Ek baar aur bula lo mola, apna zawar bana lo mola. कि दिल तड़पता है मेरा शाम सहे बाखुदाप को है सारी खबर आप रखते है जायरों पे नजर आप रखते है जायरों पे नजर अब मेरे दिल को संभालो मौला अपना जवार बना लो मौला माशाल्लाह बुलंद आवाज से एक बार और बुला लो मौला अपना जव माशाल्लाह बना लो मौला बाखुदाराजदान मेरे हो मुश्किलों को मेरी समझते हो आप मुश्किल कुशा के बेटे हो आप मुश्किल कुशा के बेटे हो इस परेशानी को टालो मौला अपना जवार बना लो मौला एक बार और बोला क्या कहने माशाल्लाह अपना जवार बना लो मौला कि मैंने जब भी कभी बादत की मैंने जब भी कभी बादत की मैंने कोई दुआ नहीं मांगी बस लबों पर ये इल्तिजाई बस लबों पे ये इल्तिजाई जो रुकावट है हटा लो मौला अपना जवार बना लो मौला एक बार बुला लो मौला अपना जवार बना लो डे आफ्टर डे विद यू आई फील लोन आई कैन नॉट फेक साइट ऑफ योर डोम ऑन माई हार्ट इज योर प्यो ने सोन On my heart is your pure name song now this heart pumps blood in the shape of your name apna zawar bana lo mola ek baar aur bula lo mola अपना जवार बना लो फॉर द लास्ट टाइम पुट योर हैंड्स इन द एयर इंशाल्लाह लाउडेस्ट वॉइस इंशाल्लाह एक बार और बुला लो मौला अपना जवार बना लो मौला अहसन पर मोहम्मद व आली मोहम्मद सलावत
brothers were like expecting a full house so can i kindly request all of you to please move as far forward as possible sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Thank you. To, to everyone here at Hyderi and to our online viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Congratulations to our living Imam on the wiladat of his grandfather, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and Kushali alam salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And Kushali Mubarak to all of you. As a community, we have completed another milestone tonight. Any guesses? Yes. It's been exactly one year since we moved to a Pioneer Place. Uh, so we are also celebrating our one year anniversary at Pioneer Place. It is a matter of great pride to see our community growing, embracing the love of Ahl al-Bayt, and achieving more, more than what, what we ever thought possible. Ours is a story going back more than seven decades in the UK with humble beginnings. Majlis is being held at people's homes and then to Hammersmith and from there to Stratham Haidari in our first year at Pioneer Place. It has been an exciting year and we look forward to many more years here. Inshallah. Our community always had high aspirations and dreams and the, with, with the help of Ahlul Bayt, Inshallah, we will keep striving. Where we are today is mostly as a result of hard work by our fathers and our forefathers, the original pioneers. Hence, I think the place is aptly named as Pioneer Place. They have left a shining legacy behind. It is correct to say that today we are standing on shoulders of giants. Please can I request a loud salawat in their honor. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Tonight's Madlis is sponsored by Iram Haider, Sundus Hassan, Muslim Barwani, Sayyid Saqib Nakwi, Masum Ali and Sh Sara Sharif, Sayyid Saim and Abande Khuda. Please recite Surah Fatiha for Marhumins of their families, the names displayed on the screen and all Marhumins. Suratul Mubarakatul Fatiha. A couple of small announcements. Um, Hydri is going green this Ramadan, so please kindly bring your own iftar kit for iftar at mosque, um, including plate, spoon, mug, and a water bottle. We require lots of donations and sponsors to cover the cost incurred in Ramadan. Kindly donate generously at either desk. We also have a table set up outside today in the next two days to give your pledges and make donations. Can we now please invite Sheikh Ayyub Rashid to the member with a loud salawat. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brothers, you want in a louder voice. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Suratul Mubarakatul Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kushali Mubarak to you all. Kushal Mubarak, Hongera, Pongezi, congratulations to you all on the wilada of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 
والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم الله صلى الله محمد وآل محمد Every one of us in this world we have what the scholars call it world view our world view is what shapes us and makes us to live in this world accordingly. World view depends on many things. Number one, the area which, where you live. Number two, it could be the knowledge which you studied. Number three, it could be the upbringing which you got from your mom and dad. Number four, it could be the environment where you are, it may force you to take that worldview. Worldview also can be, I use the word affected just for the sake of knowing. It could be because of your, the way you approach religion according to Aqaid, according to Fiqh, and so on and so forth. Our worldview is what makes us sometimes to be either good people or bad people. We can practice humanity well according to our worldview. Also, we can be people who practice racism according to our worldview. I'm sure recently, most of you, you witness those reporters who were in that area of Ukraine when they were giving their world view according to what affected the people there, they said clearly, these are people like us. They resemble us. They are not like other refugees from other parts of the world. It is their world view which made them to say whatever they said. For us as Muslims, when we talk about world view, our worldview should be according to Islam. Our worldview is the view of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allah sallallahu Muhammad wa alihi wa It is the worldview of Amirul Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi. Allah sallallahu Muhammad wa alihi wa it is the worldview of the Holy Quran in Hadihi Ummatukum Ummatan Wahida wa ana rabbukum fa'abudun. Indeed, this Ummah of yours is one Ummah, one nation, and I am your Lord, so worship me. It is the worldview which Rasulullah in Khutbati al Wada, when he went to perform Hijjat al Wada, he said clearly, La fadla li Arabiyin. There is no any superiority of an Arab, of a non-Arab, except for taqwa, God-fearing. One who has got that good approach to God-fearing, he is better than others. He cannot practice racism, segregating other people, and so on and so forth. Our worldview should be that worldview of Amirul Mu'mineen when he sent Malik al Ashtari to Egypt. He said, Oh, Malik, you are going there. Know that people are of two 
kinds. There are those brothers in faith, and there are those who are equal in humanity. This worldview, if we can practice in our daily lives, then we can see that many people will, will not have any problem with our religion, Islam. But the problems happen when we forget that worldview and we bring our own views within Islam and we call it Islam. When we talk about Aba Abdullah al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We see clearly his worldview is the worldview of the Holy Quran, Rasulullah, his father, Amirul Mu'minin, his mother, Zahra alayhi salam, and the view of Abi Muhammad al Hassan. Today we want to discuss some of these points in order for us to come out of this majlis to say we have learned something from the worldview of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, in majlis like this one, when we talk about someone like Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, number one, it's better for us to start from the Holy Quran. And alhamdulillah, mashallah, this community and those lovers of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, when you mention verses from Surah al Dahar, Surah al Insan, especially the verses which I have recited in the beginning, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa yutu'imuna ta'ama ala hubbihi. They feed people for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Miskinan, wa yatiman, wa asira. They give food to miskin, a poor person. Wa yatiman, and an orphan. Wa asiran, and a freed captive who just, was just freed. Now they feed food. And they say, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ We feed you for the sake of Allah. لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We don't want you to say, جَزَاكَ اللَّهِ وَلَا شُكُورًا شُكْرًا لَك Wallah, for us sometimes, when we give people assistance which they deserve, if someone doesn't say, شُكْرًا Thank you, I appreciate, we will never give it again to him. Aba Abdullah al Hussein was not like that. His father, his father Amirul Mu'minin, his mother Zahra, his brother Hassan Al Mujtaba alayhi salam, they said clearly, La nuridu minkum jaza'an wala shukura. What do we learn from that? Meaning that when I discharge my duty, I have discharged my duty. I don't need anything else. Whether you thank me or you don't, that's up to you. My duty is to discharge my duty. And that's what we learn from Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. When the poor person came, they discharged their duty. When they a team and often came to ask for food, they discharged their duty. And this freed captive came, they discharged their duty. But you know one thing which is very important for us, yeah? Sometimes you and me, we go around the city, we see those beggars, and that nafsul lawama comes to you. Say, can I help or can I not? Maybe this, maybe that. We pass, we don't help. And then after some times, you regret, why didn't I give? We have those moments. Look at the family of Rasulullah Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. They gave whatever they gave. And what did they give? Chapati, yeah. One roti maybe. Just that. But they gave it from the heart. Their intention was pure. And that's why we read up to today, Surah ad dahar we remember them. But the most important thing is this. They did not ask many questions as what sometimes we do. Yeah, especially now the holy month of Ramadan is coming, yeah? There will be people from the community who will help those who are in need. Please support them. Shahru Ramadan is coming. We will enjoy types of iftar. Alhamdulillah. But there will be those people who will wait for that one meal, which will be their iftar. 
family of Amirul Mu'minin is telling us that when someone comes to you to ask, to beg, don't ask many questions. Just discharge your duty. Quran number one doesn't tell us. The person who came to ask as a poor or a team or a siran, who are these people? Their names are not in the Holy Quran. So we don't know them. That's why some scholars of Tafsir, they say, maybe these were angels who were sent to test Amirul Mu'minin and his family. That's number one. Number two, the family of Ali alayhi salam did not ask the question, are you a Muslim? Uh, no, are you a practicing Muslim? I can give you, but did you pray? Sometimes we have these issues. Did you do your namaz? Are you follower of Ahlul Bayt? Oh, not. They didn't ask all these questions. When they had the knock at the door, they gave. Can we copy Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in order for us to relieve whatever stress we have of asking many questions? I have to tick all the boxes in order for you to help me. That's the most important thing in this majlis. We need to come out and say, oh, Abba Abdullah, you know what? We didn't pay attention to your actions, now we will take a resolution in order for us to do what we are required to do. They gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know for sure when sakratil maut will come to you when you are about to die. There will be moments of regrets. And one of the regrets you will regret because of the good deeds which you did and you didn't do much of them. You would say, Laitani, I wish if I do, I did more when I was in this world. Like what we recite in Surah Al Munafiqun. Yeah? And Salatul Jumu'ah is recommended. If we are full of energy, we can recite Surah Al Fatiha, Surah Al Jumu'ah, and in the second rakah, Surah Al Fatiha, and Surah Al Munafiqun, or Munafiqin. There, there is an ayah. Hatta, uh, the ayah says, until when the death comes to you, or the pangs of death comes, you say, La Ali, Rabbi Rji'uni. O Allah, make these angels, make them to make me return back. La Ali, La Ali, A'malu Salihan fi Matarak, lakin in Surah Al Munafiqun, fa asaddaqa wa akun min as salihin. Let them take me back so that I can go back and give sadaqah and I can be a righteous person. There will be that moment for some of us. We need to avoid that by discharging our duties when it comes to poor people, when we help them. Now, Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam have taught us that. We are talking in this majlis about Abba Abdullah al Hussein. The one the Holy Quran says, فَإِنْ حَاجَكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ يا رسول الله يا حبيب الله محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم صل على محمد Anyone who disputes with you on this matter that you are the last messenger and Isa alayhi salam was the messenger of Allah, not son of God, anyone disputes with you, Fakul, tell them, come, come, let us challenge one another. But when we come, you bring your sons, we'll bring ours. You bring your women, we'll bring ours. We'll bring our nafs and you bring yours. Rasulullah came with Abna. There were not many. They were just two. Abna is plural of Ibn in Arabic language. Ibn is one son. Abna, many, more than three and more. But here in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Abna Ana, there were two. To represent all the children. Wanisa Ana, there was only one lady, and that is Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And Fusana, of course, Amirul Mu'mineen, Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. 
when we talk about Aba Abdullah al Hussein, we talk about the one who was one of the abna in the event of Mubahala. He has been mentioned in the Holy Quran. We talk about Aba Abdullah al Hussein, then we remember Ayah 33, Surah 33. Innama yuridu Allahu li yudhiba ankum al rijisa ahl al bayt wa yutahhirakum tathhira. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad. Do you know Mufassirin, Mufassirin of the Holy Quran, Sunnis and Shias, when they discuss about this ayah 33 of Surah 33, they call the ayah, ayah to tathir, ayah of purification. Even though in the beginning the ayah talks about women of Rasulullah, وَقَرْنَا فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى until when it reaches in Nama Yuridullah. Why? Because these are Ahlul Bayt Mutahharun. Even the ayah is known as Ayatul Tathir. Aba Abdullah al Hussein was there. Today we have had, mashallah, beautiful recitation of Hadithul Kisa. Those are Mutahharun according to Ayah at Tathir. Imam Abi Abdullah is one of them. So when we talk about him on this occasion, we are talking about someone very special. Very, very special. And we need to go closer to him. But one thing which we need to remind one another, which is a very simple point. However, it's very useful for us to mention. Imam Hussein is known as Hussein. When we want to know the meaning of Hussein, scholars are referring to us to Hassan. They say, if you know the meaning of Hassan, you will know the meaning of Hussein. So we say, what is the meaning of Hassan? They say someone who is good. Yeah, Hassan is good. Even in Arabic, Fusha Arabic, yeah? Fusha, standard Arabic. When you do something, Arabs normally say, Hassanan, you have done good. Uh, in Kiswahili, as Ahsant, Asante. Yeah. The, we remove the Ha, Ahsanta, Asante. So Ahsan, Imam Hassan, good man. Yeah, maybe the English, you have those people in old days. I don't know if they still use this, Mr. Goodman. Yeah, that is Hassan. So Hussein is the good one also. But in Arabic language, they have these what they call the miniatures. You have a name as Hassan. You want to make small Hassan, you say Hussein. We have Sahal, Suhail. Salim, Sulaim. What about Jabir? Jubair or Juwaibir? So you have these, what they call them, miniatures in terms of Arabic grammar. Normally, Arabs, they have two approaches. When you make a name or a noun as musagar, they call it, you make it as a small, it could have either a bad connotation or a good connotation. If you call a man within Arab community, man means rajul, don't ever, I mentioned for the sake of mentioning, don't ever call an Arab Rujail. There will be a fight there. Definitely there will be a fight. Rajul is Rajul. Don't go to miniature. Why? Because you are making him small. Always Arabs say, well, Ana Rajul. I am a man. Yeah? Except for Muawiyah when Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In the battle of Sifin, Amirul Muminin, by the way, the mentioning Ali is Ibadah. Yeah. Ali Amirul Muminin said, Muawiyah, you want to cause bloodshed, people would die here if we are going to fight. If you are a man, if you are Rajul, come out, you and me, let us fight and settle this matter now and now. Amr ibn al As, his advisor, advisor of Muawiyah, he said, Yes, this is the good thing. Go, Muawiyah, fight with him. Muawiyah looked at Amr ibn al and said, who went to fight with Ali and he returned back alive? <laughs> Are you joking? He didn't go. Now, Amirul Muminin alayhi salam, he tells us that if you are Rajul, you stand on your feet. Now, Imam Hassan is Hassan. Hussein is Hussein. The positive side of making a noun to be smaller is when you show mahabba. Yeah, Hassan, you call him Hussein. Why? Because you show that this one is good, but this one is the good one who is little good one. 
and that's why Hussein was known as Hussein. Asma says that this, when the day Imam Abi Abdullah was born, Rasulullah was informed, and he came and he said, bring me my son. Asma said, I took Abi Abdullah as a baby to Rasulullah, and he carried him. I could see happiness from the face of Rasulullah. And he kissed him, and he said, this is my baby. And of course, in the Majalis of Wafat, we know the second part of the story. But here, what we learn is that Rasulullah gave the name Hussein to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Not only that, on the seventh day, he did aqiqa. This sunnah is very important for us to remind one another. But aqiqa of Rasulullah means what? He slaughtered either a goat or a sheep, and he said to those who are there, take the shoulder, give it to the midwife. Let midwife enjoy the meat. Arabs, when they choose meat, the meat which is so expensive, they call it lahmul katif, shoulder. We, went, we, we go to buy meat, we say oh, shoulder, shoulder and shoulder, but we don't pay attention which Arabs pay. Rasulullah says take the shoulder, give to the midwife in order for her also to enjoy the celebration that my grandson has been born. Brothers, when our wives give birth, we don't give shoulders to the midwives. Yeah, 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 you don't do bad. Why? Because there are many at the hospital. How many can you give? <laughs> However, we give cards, yeah? Chocolate, mashallah, box of chocolate. You say, thank you very much. That's good. But if you can invite them for Akika, do that. But don't stop to do the sunnah of Akika. Akika, you bring people home and you say, let us celebrate because why? The baby has been born. This sunnah is a good sunnah. You want to send money outside the country for the people to enjoy, poor people to enjoy, that's good. But don't let your house without Akika because it's sunnah of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So Rasulullah named Hussein as Hussein. Now, when you look at the relationship between Rasulullah and Aba Abdullah, it is sufficient for us to mention only two hadith. Hadith number one is of Rasulullah when he said, Husaynun minni, wa ana min al Hussein. This hadith requires a lot of research and discussions. The first part is easy for us to understand. Husaynun minni, Hussein comes from me. I, Rasulullah, am the grandfa grandfather of Hussein. So Husseinun minni. Wa ana and I, Rasulullah, min al Hussein is difficult to understand. Wa ana min al Hussein, and I am from Hussein. Here some scholars say it could be the meaning that Rasulullah says the, the stance, the steps, the decisions of Hussein are my same stance, decisions, and positions, which whatever Hussein takes, I take too. Whatever decision Hussein takes, I approve. Wa ana min al Hussein. Now, that relationship is so huge. But we see on the day when Abi Abdullah, he was born, Rasulullah came and he said, Oh Allah, I love these two, al Hassan wal Hussein. I ask you to love whomsoever loves Hussein and Hassan alayhi salam. This dua, I believe, it's the dua which made all of us to be the followers of Abba Abdullah al Hussein salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, when we look at the books of history, they say that Abba Abdullah al Hussein was so generous. When you look at the generosity of Imam Hassan, of course, you couldn't match it at his time. But Abba Abdullah al Hussein also was so generous. Some scholars say, in order for you to understand it, take it, take the dua which we recite in Shahru Ramadan, generosity of Abba Abdullah. Allahumma adkhil al ahli al kuburi as surur. Allahumma aghni. Start from there. 
Allahumma aghni kulla faqir. Oh Allah, I ask you to make anyone who is poor, make him to be able to have that sufficient. Make him rich. Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. He used to help the poor people every day. Aghni kulla faqir. That was his sunnah. Allahumma ashbi kulla ja'i. Feed those who are hungry. Abi Abdullah used to have that sunnah every day. He used to feed the poor people who were hungry. Allahumma ksu kulla uriyan. Allah, I ask you to cover those who do not have clothing. Abi Abdullah used to do that. And he was so generous that Medina understood who Abba Abdullah was. But he did not accept any hadiyah from evil people, from bad people, where there was a question mark. One day Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan came to perform Hajj in Mecca. He came with his delegation. He met with Abi Abdullah. He gave him a lot of money. He said, Ya Abba Abdullah, you are the grandson of Rasulullah, take all this money. And a lot of clothing. Abi Abdullah did not accept even a single one. He returned all of them to Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. He said, no, I will not take from you. Now, scholars, they say here, Hussein alayhi salam was from Naslun Tayyib. His origin is pure from the mother and the father. And that's why he didn't want to take anything from Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam used to have, according to his daily routine, a program of identifying those who are in need. If someone would go to him to ask for anything, assistance, he would give it to him. And that's why we read this hadith which has been narrated from him. He said, make haste when you want to do good things, make haste to do good things. And know for sure, this is the difficult part. He says, know for sure, the hawaij in nas, the needs of people to you, these are ni'am. These are blessings to you. Meaning, when you see people come to you, they ask you, please help us, assist us. Don't ever come to a point of saying, why me? They see me only? Why they don't see other people? Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam said, when you see people come to you, know that these are the blessings of Allah upon you. So don't return them. Like in Wallah, it's difficult. Difficult. Sometimes even when you see phone is ringing and you see some names, you say, oh, again, and again, and again, and again. We miss the point. Look at the worldview of Abba Abdullah in Hussein alayhi salam. He says, no, help them. Scholars of Fuqaha and Akhlaq, they say, well, if you don't have something to help those who are in need, at least say something good. Say something good. And here I will talk to the young generation who are sitting in this majlis. May Allah bless all of them, inshallah. Sometimes, wallah, you adults and me, we have issues with our children, especially those who are born and bred here. When we help those who are in need in Africa, for example, in India, in Pakistan, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your uncles, they say, well, don't they have their own money? Why always they want from you? I'm sure I'm not alone on that. Yeah. They don't have their own money. Why they, they disturb you all the time? It's because of their upbringing. Our upbringing is that if I have something, let me share with those who do not have. And this is exactly the sunnah of Abba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. For us, if we can't help, at least say something which is good. Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. When we look at his worldview is that I cannot eat and sleep while my neighbor and those who are in need sleep hungry. I cannot rejoice if they cannot rejoice. Their problem is mine. And this is the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wow. 
Rasulullah says, Laisa minna. He will not be amongst us. Man bata shab'anan. A person, a Muslim who goes to sleep, his belly is full. Wajaruhu ja'i'. And his neighbor is hungry. You will not become a Muslim. You sleep, you are well, but your neighbors are sleeping hungry. And sometimes you know they cry, children, they don't have anything. We need to be aware that Islam of Abu Abdullah al Hussein is this. Abu Abdullah al Hussein has karamat. Karamat are those things which, when you look at Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, you wonder what did and what happened until this came like that. They near they are about to become mu'jiza miracles, and there are many. Look at Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan. He prepared the ground for Yazid to come to crush Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Yazid came, yes, he wanted to crush according to his own understanding. Let me finish about Abdullah al Hussein. And he did. He killed him. However, he thought, I have, I'm, I'm done. There will be no any other Hussein. Lakin subhanallah. How many Hussein is came after the martyrdom of Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Up to today, the name Hussein is still the name which every year you and me we know the ziyara of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, ziyara al Arba'iniya. The humanity have never seen such a thing. Yes, I hear there is another big gathering in India and maybe other places. But where have you seen a place where you go for the ziyar of Abba Abdullah? You see a Muslim is ready to help. A Christian is ready to help. Those who do not have even religion, they, ha they are ready to help. You are fed. You are given a place to stay. Your feet will be massaged in the name of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Where have we seen this? Last year or this year, here in UK, the campaign, who's, who is Hussein? May Allah reward all those who work for this organization, who is Hussein? For the first time ever, the blood which was donated in the name of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, UK has never seen such a thing. In the name of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. These are known as Karamat. And Hussein is Karim. Hussein is very generous. I myself was not a follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. I was born as a Muslim, Sunni, Shafi'i. Yes, we say we love Rasulullah, we love Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam, but we don't follow them. And this is the big issue. Those brothers here, brothers really, Ahlul Sunnah, they say we love Ahlul Bayt, but you ask them, after love, what do you do? They say, yeah, we love them. Thank you very much. After love, what do you do? We love them. <laughs> Thank you very much. But do you follow them? Yes, we follow. Show us one fiqhi mas'ala from Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. They don't have. One dua from Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. It will be difficult for them to find. We love them. We love them. Alhamdulillah, we love them, but we should follow them. Because as in Arabic, the way it says, when you love someone, you have to follow. Following is love. Yeah? Not just I love you, then I don't follow you. Subhanallah, what would happen between us and our, our wives? Yeah, when you say I love you, darling, I love you, sweetheart, I love you, habibti. But then you don't practice the love. There will be problems there. Now, I was born as a Sunni, Shafi. I love Abba Abdullah. I remember clearly, Wallah, there was a photograph, yeah? yeah I, I call it photograph because it was framed of a person sitting. There is a lion here and another person sitting near the lion. And behind the lion and this man, there were two young, young men. Later on, we, be, we came to know that the lion is the lion, Asad. The man who was sitting near the lion, Amirul Mu'minin. And those two are Al Imam Al Hassan Wal Hussein alayhi masalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad.
But we love, we don't, we don't follow anything. Eventually, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. I believe, I believe this is because of our mothers. That love, they nurtured us to love Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. I got the opportunity to go to study at the Hausa. While I was Sunni, may Allah reward my teacher, Sayyid Murtaba al-Amili. Sayyid from Lebanon came to teach us and he said clearly, well, you can come study here, but don't change your madhab. Just study Islam. My passion was Arabic language. I said, inshallah, I'll learn from them and then I'll go away. So I studied, alhamdulillah, until time of Muharram came. Sayyid Murtad al-Amili, jazahullah khair al jaza. He said, all of you now, you have to go for Majlis of Muharram. There is a sheikh in Mombasa, Kenya. His name is Sheikh Abdullahi Nasir. Rahmatullahi alayhi. He passed away this year. Sheikh Abdullahi Nasir, he was also a Sunni. But he did his own research and he became follower of Ahlul Bayt. Sheikh Abdullahi Nasir, in his majalis for 12 days, 12 nights, he was asking this question. Who killed Aba Abdullahi al Hussein? Were they Muslims or non-Muslims? What is the answer? The, uh, the, those who killed Abba Abdullah are Muslims. What went wrong until Muslims could kill the grandson of Rasulullah? Let us go back to the history. What happened? The person who gave the order, Yazid. How did Yazid come to power? Who made him to be the Khalifa? And that who became Khalifa? Who prepared the ground? So Sheikh Abdullah went back to the whole history until the death of Rasulullah. I was taking notes and I said, I will prove Sheikh Abdullah wrong. This Sheikh, I think, is quoting the books just for the sake of Majlis. After the Majlis, I said, now I'm going to recheck whatever he has said from Tabari, Ibn al Athir, and many other books, Sharh al Nawawi of Mus uh, Sahih Muslim, and Bukhari, and so on and so forth. I went and I found each and every point which Sheikh Abdullah Nasir rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned. At that moment, I decided I will have to become a follower of Ahlul Bayt. But, 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 it's not easy, wallah. Imagine your father, your mother, your brothers, your sister, the whole community are not Shias. And I lived in a place where Shias were known as Isna Asharia. Isna Asharia. In Kiswahili, remove I. They used to call them Shia Sina Sharia. What is Sina? <laughs> Meaning you don't have. Nati. Nati. Yeah? Na Sharia Nati. Yeah, Sharia Mafi. Maku. <laughs> Shia who do not have any Sharia. My mother, I remember clearly, we used to see the, the, during the Muharram Julus, mashallah, wearing clothing, blacks, and carrying the tabut. He used, she used to tell me, those are Sina Sharia. Make sure, take care. Say, don't worry, mama. I will not become among the people who don't have Sharia. <laughs> However, <laughs> subhanallah. Salaam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I want to prove Sheikh Abdullah Nasir wrong, so I went to the library and I was checking and checking, rechecking. Sayyid Murtaba, our teacher, said to me one day, he saw me, he saw me coming to the library and going up, out, in, out. He said, I don't want you to become a Shia. I said, don't worry, Sayyidna, I will not become a Shia. After looking at all the Masail now, I said, no, maybe, Maybe I'm wrong. Let me go to one particular area in Africa. For those who are in Kenya, you know Kenya, there is one area is known as Lamu. I went to Lamu. Lamu, you can say it is like a center of Shawafi, Shafi in East Africa today. Their scholars, their ayatollahs are in Lamu. I went and I said, well, I have come across these Masail of Shias. So now I was, uh, I was playing what you call devil advocates. Let me become a Shia and I'm asking them questions. I ask different questions according to what Sheikh Abdullah Nasir said and many other issues which I found in the books of history and tafsir. 
Wallahi, I couldn't get the satisfactory answers. Until one day I was talking to one mudir of madrasa, principal. He said to me clearly, our aqidah and the aqidah of Ithna Ashariya, their aqidah is more stronger than our aqidah. I said to myself, thank you very much. You have now pushed me into this madhab. So now how can I declare this in front of people? Mombasa, there was a good friend of mine. His name is Munir Walji. For those people who know him, alhamdulillah, he's now in Mombasa as well. I went to him and I said, Munir, give me turba. From tonight, I declare as a follower of Ahlul Bayt because of Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. If I die, make sure you bury me as a Shi'i. He said, I will take care of that. Alhamdulillah, him and myself, we are all alive up to now. Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward those who were muhsinin. So now, how could I relate this to my father? How could I relate this to my mother? How, how could I relate this to the community? It was difficult. And it was here, alhamdulillah, some Kojas, members of Koja Jamaats, who were, alhamdulillah, the leaders of the Koja Jamaat, they helped us. And they said, don't worry, we will be with you. We will make sure nothing bad happens to you. And alhamdulillah, slowly, slowly, I, <laughs> those days of tapes, tape recorders, I'm sure our children don't know what are we talking about. Yeah, those tape recorders, I started bringing, the, bringing them to my father. And I said, listen to, to this sheikh. He fell in love with the Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullahi Nasir. He listened to the lectures. One day I said, Sheikh Abdullahi Nasir is in town. You want to meet with him? He said, yes. So we invited him at home for lunch. Sheikh Abdullahi Nasir, mashallah, he was a good speaker. He talked to my father. My father loved whatever Sheikh said. He said, I want some books in order for me to, re to read. Eventually, he himself became follower of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi musalam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He passed away as a follower of Ahlul Bayt, rahmatullahi alayhi wa ala al amwat insha'Allah. Slowly, slowly, alhamdulillah, we manage to change our families and all of them, alhamdulillah, are followers of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. But it's not easy. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It's not easy. What made me up to today, I say, when the question comes, how did you become a follower of Ahlul Bayt? I say about Abdullah al Hussein. Nobody except him. Why? Because, because I came to know the realities. I'm, and I'm not alone. There are many people through Abba Abdullah, they became followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. There are many sisters because of Abba Abdullah and Sayyida Zainab, they decided to wear hijab. Recently I, have this, I had the story. Subhanallah. One particular brother came from Germany at the time of Sayyid al khuir al marhum and this brother, his sister passed away. When the sister passed away, he decided, I will go to bury my sister in Wadi Salam. He went to Iraq. He met with Sayyid al khui He said, my sister, I'm coming to bury her. He said, no problem, go bury your sister. He went to bury the sister, and all of a sudden, when he finished, he was searching for a, his passport, want to go back to Germany. He couldn't see the passport. He thought, I think my passport dropped in the grave where I buried my sister. What can I do? He went to Sayyid al khui Give me fatwa. What can I do? Can I go and exhume the grave in order for me to get my passport? Sayyid al khui said, yes, you can do. These are one of the reasons which you are allowed to exhume the grave. There are about 10 or 11 places or issues where you can exhume the grave. He went and he exhumed the grave and he saw something which was terrifying him. He saw his sister. They just buried the sister, but he could see the body without kafan, without shroud. The kafan is aside, but the sister is without kafan. But he could see the passport. He took passport, and they covered the grave. He went back to Sayyid al-Khui. Sayyidna, I saw my sister. 
naked. I got my passport. What is this? Sayyid says, Sadaqa Rasulullah. The Holy Messenger has said the truth that if a sister doesn't want to wear hijab, she knows the rulings and she doesn't want to practice the ruling of hijab. Rasulullah said she will be resurrected naked. And that was seen in the grave. With Abba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, some sisters decided to wear hijab because what they came to learn about Sayyida Zainab salamullahi alayha. When we talk about Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein, this Imam who is Karim, we need to know that he took stance in this world. Many of Aimma alayhi salam, or all the Aimma, they admire Abba Abdullah al Hussein. The question here is why on the day of Eid, you, you look at the books of Dua, it says one of the A'mal of the day of Eid recites Ziyar of Abba Abdullah. Laylatul Qadr recites Ziyar of Abba Abdullah. Sad occasion recites Ziyar of Abba Abdullah. Happy occasion recites Ziyar of Abba Abdullah because of her stance, which, stance which made him to be Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He stood against those people who wage war against Islam. There is war. At his time, he stood against them. And he said clearly, In kana dinu Muhammadin lam yastakim illa bi qatli faya suyufu khudini. If the religion of Rasulullah would not stand except for me to be killed, all swords come and take me. Abi Abdullah knew there was a war. In our majlis today, I would like to say there is a war now. There is a war outside. There is a war against our children. There is a war inside our houses. There is a war everywhere. Ideological war, theological war, ethical war, economical war, jurisprudential war. There are enemies who want to take our children away from our deen. There are enemies who are ready to make sure our sisters do not practice our deen. There are many enemies who don't want us to practice our religion. Let us remember Abba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. In kana deenu Muhammadin lam yastaqim illa bi qatli fayasuyufu khudini. In order for us to establish this religion. There is no physical war, no, but ideological war, ethical war, mor moral war. These are the wars when we are faced with calamities and problems. Let us remember by Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. It is only through Hussein we will be able to win. It is through Hussein we will be able to achieve success. It is through Hussein alayhi salam we will be able to stand as Husseiniyun. One scholar said, if you want to get success, make sure when you get children, make sure you have at least one who you put intention to make him as Husseini. You will see success, insha'Allah ta'ala. We pray to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bi barakata bi abdillahi al Hussein. Ya Allah, fulfill our hajat. Ya Allah, bi barakati al Hussein. Those who are not well, cure them, ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, bi barakati al Hussein. We ask you to have mercy on all, all our marhumin. Ya Allah, bi barakati al Hussein. And the radhi, the baby who is on the chest of Hussein, we ask you to protect our children. Ya Allah, bi barakati al Hussein. It's one year since this center has been established here. We ask you, Ya Allah, to make this center to be one of the centers which will carry the name of Hussein until yawm al qiyamah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the organizers of these majalis and for their marhumin. And marhumin of all mu'minin and mu'minat, let us recite Suratul Mubarakatul Fatiha ma'as salawat. Allah. Allah.
salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Can I please invite Hassan Lalji? Salawat. Kule man, kule Quran, yak zaban nare, haydari. 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 Mere dil ki sada ya Hussain. Mere dil ki sada ya Hussain. मेरे दिल की सदा या हुसैन सबको हो मरहबा या हुसैन मेरे दिल की सदा या हुसैन सबको हो मरहबा या उसकी नसल में غیرت رہے گی جس نے کہا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین سب کا ہو مرحبا یا حسین کس نور کی آمد ہوئی سجد مہ فاطمہ ہر دور کے یزید کا ہونے لگا خاتمہ کرب و بلا سے آواز آئی لوگ یا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین سب کو ہو مرحبا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین سب کو ہو مرحبا یا حسین مصروف ہوں غرور میں اب کوئی بھی در نہیں فطر اس کا تو سردار ہے ارنے میں ہم سر نہیں جبریل دے کو میرے پرو پر اب ہے لکھا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین سب کو ہو تقدیر نے کروٹ ہے لی بس ایک ہی رات میں ایمان کا سورج تلو پھر ہو گیا ذات میں خیمے قدر پر سر کو جھکا کر ہر نے کہا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین سب کو ہو مرحبا یا وہ خات تو جہان میں پھر نہ بکاری ہوا اس ہاتھ پہ ہر دور کا اب رسک جاری ہوا سینے کے اوپر جب ہاتھ لے کر کہنے لگا یا حسین میرے دل کی صدا یا حسین 
मेरे दिल की सदाया हुसैन मेरे दिल की सदाया हुसैन सब मिल के मेरे दिल की सदाया हुसैन सबको हो मरहबा हुसैन लबे कया हुसैन लबे कया हुसैन नारे मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलोम That's our Shabab Haidari, the Imran Datus and Mullah Mullah Rashid for of tomorrow, inshallah. And before we start, uh, another loud salawat for the young boy, Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Those of you, if uh, if you didn't hear me before the majlis, I would like to extend my congratulations to you and the Imam of our time, Imam Zaman. عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرج. On this auspicious occasion, on the birth of our amazing third Imam, Imam Al Hussein عليه السلام. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. <coughs> so inshallah, um, as, as requested by the uh, committee, there is, uh, they wanted me to do some English too. So what I've done is I've kind of embedded some English verses in the Urdu Kalam. Uh, so inshallah, and there's also, as, as we can see, the translations on the screens as well. So do look at it if you're not familiar with Urdu, uh, so you can understand as to what's being recited. So the first... Um, piece is, um, is with the inspiration of how you never saw Imam al Hussein and Abu Fadl Abbas apart, always together, always that loyalty. And this is the, that the kalam, this kalam has been inspired from that where it's talking about the two kings of Karbala and each verse talks about, it, it, it just says, it compares the two and then there's a nice uh, punchline in the end inshallah which uh, talks about the fadail um, of uh, the two inshallah. So, when you're listening, inshallah, if there's any uh, line that hits you, you feel it. Um, as I can see, you guys are doing the naras already, so keep them coming, inshallah. May Allah bless you all. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Karbala, Karbala, Tere do badshah. Karbala, Karbala, Tere do badshah. I'll say Karbala, Karbala, you guys reply, Tere do badshah, inshallah. Let's see if we can make that work. Karbala, Karbala, Tere do Wah, kya kehne? Karbala, Karbala, Tere एक मुहम्मद का बेटा एक जहरा की दुआ नारा हैदरी करबला करबला तेरे दो बादशाह करबला करबला एक मुहम्मद का बेटा एक जहरा की दुआ करबला करबला तेरे दो बादशाह करबला करबला तेरे एक जवाना ने जन्नत का सरदार है दूसरा बाद खैबर अलमदार है अली माला अली माला यानी एक जवाना ने जन्नत का सरदार है दूसरा बाद खैबर अलमदार है एक खुदाए सब्र और रिजाम एक कुरान वफा 
کربلا کربلا تیرے دو مشہد بلند بلند آواز سے کربلا کربلا تیرے کربلا کربلا تیرے ایک وہ جس کی مرضی ہے رب کی رضا ایک وہ جس کی مرضی ہے رب کی رضا ایک وہ جس کو باب الحوائج کہا ایک وہ جس کی مرضی ہے رب کی رضا ایک وہ جس کو باب الحوائج کہا دونوں حرم کے بیچ میں بیٹھو مل جائے خدا علی والا علی والا ایک وہ جس کی مرضی ہے رب کی دعا ایک وہ جس کو باب الحوائج کہا دونوں حرم کے بیچ میں بیٹھو مل جائے خدا کربلا کربلا تیرے دو کربلا کربلا تیرے دو ایک عطا ہی عطا اور شفا ہی شفا ایک سخا ہی سخا اور وفا ہی وفا ایک عطا ہی عطا اور شفا ہی شفا ایک سخا ہی سخا اور وفا ہی وفا ایک کا دریا پر قبضہ ایک دلوں کا شہنشاہ علی مولا کربلا علی مولا حیدری کربلا کربلا تیرے دو بردش ماشاء اللہ جیئے کربلا کربلا تیرے کربلا تیری پہچان خاک شفا کربلا تیری پہچان خاک شفا انبیاء نے یہاں آکے سجدہ کیا کربلا تیری پہچان خاک شفا انبیاء نے یہاں آکے سجدہ کیا زہرہ کے بیٹوں نے تجھ کو رتبہ یہ دیا علی مولا علی مولا علی مولا اللہم سلام سلامت رہے ماشاءاللہ زہرہ کے بیٹوں نے تجھ کو رتبہ یہ دیا کربلا کربلا تیرے دو شاہ کربلا کربلا تیرے یہ تیری منزلت دو جہاں سے سوا زائروں کو تیرے سب نے حاجی کہا مظہروں میں سمسار جہاں میں دیتے ہیں صدا کربلا کربلا تیرے دو بادشاہ کربلا One is the son of Zahra, one is the son of Zahra, one born for Karbala, 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 Tere do Badishah, Karbala, Karbala, MashaAllah. One is known for his and his family's thirst 
and the other is known as the quencher of thirst. One is known for his and his family's thirst, and the other is known as the quencher of thirst. To certify this fact is the mushk of Sakina. Karbala, Karbala, Tere do badisha. Mashallah, Karbala, Karbala, Tere do. There is one whose every wish is our Lord's pleasure, known as the grantor of wishes the other. Come and sit between the two, you'll understand Allah. Karbala, Ali Mala. Karbala, Karbala, Tere do badisha. Karbala, Karbala, Tere do. MashaAllah, Abar Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. I'm loving, loving this energy, mashallah, 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 good. Hussain baat rahe hai, nijat le jao. You definitely know this, inshallah, recite together. Hussain baat rahe hai, نجات لے جاؤ کچھ آنسوں کے وز کائنات لے جاؤ نارا حیدری حسین بانٹ رہے ہیں نجات لے جاؤ اور یہ ماتمی کے حوالے سے شیر کہ کہیں گے ماتمی حلقوں سے لوگ محشر میں کہیں گے ماتمی حلقوں سے لوگ محشر میں ہمیں 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 حسین کی جنت میں ساتھ لے جاؤ حسین بانٹ رہے ہیں نجات لے جاؤ For the translation, we're going to miss the next verse. We're going to go to the one after, inshallah. Hussain baat rahe hain nijat le Or lehd to kya, lehd to kya hai Mehkne lagegi khulde bari لہد تو کیا ہے مہکنے لگے گی خلد بری ذرا سی ذرا سی خاک شفا اپنے ساتھ لے علی مالا علی مالا علی مالا علی مالا Hadari Ali Wala Ali Wala Lahd to kya hai mehkne lagegi khuld bari Zara si khak shifa apne saath le jao حسین بانٹ رہے ہیں نجات لے جاؤ 
हुसैन बाट रहे हैं निजात ले समान गो एन थल फितरोस हिज प्रेयर्स बीन ग्रांटे Someone go and tell Fitrus his prayers granted. Upon his wings are the words Ya Hussein planted. Upon his wings are the words Ya Hussein planted. हुसैन बात रहे हैं निजात ले फगीवनेस ऑफ सम क्राइम्स और अन फगीव बाल फगीवनेस ऑफ सम क्राइम्स are unforgivable unless your master is hussein whose love is unconditional hallelujah unless your master is hussein whose love is unconditional ahsan salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad And just Hadari Ali Ali, kya kehne? Ya Ali Ali. And uh, just to finish off, with all your permission, and I'd like to do this tonight and tomorrow night, inshallah, as well. We'll finish with a du'a. And uh, this was a, a something that happened to me personally when it comes to the connection of the Imam. The Imam of our time, we don't talk to him often, and we we also often do zulm on our Imam. He's there waiting for us. Um, and I had an event recently myself that that really kind of knocked me into shape. You know, like talk to your Imam. And that inspired myself to come up with a concept of a du'a munajat. Inshallah, with the blessing of Allah and the Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, we'll be releasing on the 15th of Sha'ban. But I want to recite it with, uh, to you guys for the first time, inshallah. And we can all recite it together. But it's asking forgiveness from our Imam, that forgive us for not talking to you. And I think it's very important that we do start um, speaking to our Imam every day, inshallah. So with your permission, salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان سب ملکے بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام اٹ گئے ہیں گناہوں میں یہ قلب و جان بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان بخش دیجے ہمیں یا ماشاءاللہ بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان بھول بیٹھے ہیں ہم آپ ہیں باخبر غیب سے آپ رکھتے ہیں ہم پر نظر آپ ظاہر نہیں ہے مگر در میں آن بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام زمان بخش دیجے ہمیں یا امام ظلم کرتا ہے باطل تو سہتے ہیں ہم حق ہو کہنا تو خاموش رہتے ہیں ہم دے نہیں پاتے ہم مثل میسم بیان بخش دیجے ہمیں 
में जमा बख्श दीजे हमें आए माँ में जमा बख्श दीजे हमें For the last time with your loudest of voice, so Imam hears us. Bakhsh DJ Hame Ya Ima. Bakhsh DJ Hame Ya Ima Me Zaman. Ahsan, I think I went a few minutes over my time. Forgive me. Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.